Previously, on Morrowind, Hortator, Nereverine, both titles needed to truly become what I am destined to be. The former arch canon, Sarioni has requested I meet him in the High Fane in Vivek. Is it a trap? Will I be captured and turned over to Ordinators or the Ministry of Truth? I've spent a lot of my time in Morrowind, doubting myself, the God's will, and Azura's plans for me. But there comes a time in everyone's life where you can no longer live in fear of what could happen to you. All you can do is prepare for what is to come. If I am somehow killed or captured, Andorin, I want you to know how much I care for you and your mother. This journal will be delivered to you upon my death, should the worst happen. I love you, son. Never lose faith that the righteous will always overcome the wicked. Hello, and welcome back to some more Morrowind with Falgen Salas. Today, we are going to be meeting with the Arch Cannon of the Temple. And we're gonna have to see what uh, he has in store for us. It's a mystery, I've, you know. I don't wanna spoil it for those of you who haven't beat Morrowind before, so. I'm not gonna tell you, but yeah, we're gonna go meet with him. First though, I kind of want to level up a little bit. Either now or before we go and stop Dagother, I'd like to be a very high level. Get a lot of our magical skills up. But first things first, we are going to do some leveling. I would like to be leveled up before we end up fighting Dagother. All right, so let's level up here. Oh boy, we're being attacked. Who are you, strange man? Go away. <laughs> man, first I get attacked by how Stagoth elephant caved in face men, and now it's assassins who just straight up kill me. <laughs> okay. Well, that's the end of the adventure. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Okay, let's try this again. Deals a lot of damage. Spear level 50, I like it, I like it. I don't like being interrupted when I'm trying to sleep though. I wonder where these guys are from. Oh, <laughs> uh, come on, get out of here. Marksman 31, all right. Man, you have a lot of health. Come on, don't make me use more potions. I need them. There we go. Assassin. Dark Brotherhood. Oh no. What would the Dark Brotherhood want with me? I guess we'll never know. Well, back to sleep. You'll die screaming. Are you serious? <laughs> okay. I guess we're not sleeping today. Let's go tell a guard, I guess. You know, if they're gonna keep ambushing us. Maybe we can get one of them to protect us while we sleep. You say you've been attacked by assassins. From your description and the look of that dart you found, it sounds like the work of the Dark Brotherhood. I'm not sure who you angered, but stay away from me. I suppose this should be officially reported, though. Speak to Apelles, Matthias, and Ebenhart about this matter. Scum, all of them. If they're not after you, friend, if they're after you, friend, you'd better find yourself some help, or write a will, or both. Apelles has recently arrived from Cyrodiil. You'll likely find him inspecting the grounds at Ebenhart. Could I sleep now, please? I'm. Very tired. <laughs> I just want to level up. All right, let's go sleep in the same bed and expect different results. Okay, it worked this time. Yeah, we're gonna get willpower, agility, and personality. And I'm gonna go level up again. All right, I'm gonna go to Ghost Gate because there's an individual there who will be able to help us level up our endurance. So, all right, I think this guy trains spears pretty high. So we are going to mark Ghost Gate and train from him. He is someone who moves around, so that's a little bit annoying, but not much we can do. Let's rest again. Get willpower, endurance, and personality this time. I want to max out willpower and continue getting our spell casting up. I'd like to be able to cast some cool spells. Right now we've been solely relying on amulets and what not besides our summons our conjuration is pretty decent we've been able to summon some good conjurations but i'm gonna keep training all right another level willpower endurance and personality i think i'm gonna try to get to level 40 and then we will continue on with the main quest 
Okay, and another one. Willpower, personality, endurance, and then I'm gonna try to shoot for one more level up here. Okay, and then the final level, willpower, personality, endurance again. That's good enough for now. I'll probably level up before we go fight Dig Author. I just wanted to get a few in now. Give us a power boost. That endurance is definitely gonna help. Let us head to Vivek and speak with the former Arch Cannon because technically we are the Arch Cannon right now. I wish it would acknowledge that. All right, and here we are. The guards are just gung-ho friendly, so. We're here to discuss the temple's doctrine on the Nerevarine, Valgencellus. The temple must protect the people from false doctrines, and your association with Imperial Intelligence makes your motivations and integrity suspect. But you have been chosen Hortator and Nerevarine by the Dunmer people, and we have reached a crisis with Dagoth Ur. We can no longer defend the people against the awakened Sixth House. You and your prophecies may represent our last hope. Our situation is desperate, but I would rather have you hear the details of our situation and the circumstances leading up to that situation from Lord Vivek himself. He has asked to see you. Would you agree to a private meeting with him and hear in person what he has to say? Oh boy, we get to meet a god. Yes, I'll meet with him. Good. Here are two keys. One to the private back entrance to my quarters, the other to a locked entrance to Lord Vivek's palace. I regret that at the present the ordinators are not completely under my control, so for now, I'll ask that you avoid confrontations with them. Lord Vivek is expecting you. His lordship is remarkably patient, but perhaps it would be better not to keep him waiting. We're gonna go knock on the front door. <laughs> but first, let's pray to Vivek. There he is. The man, the myth, the legend. Alright, what's going on? I expected you. We have business, you and I. When I was young like you, I was very impatient, so I will keep our business short. Then later, there may be time for other things. First, I propose to remove my curse upon the Nerevarine, end the persecution of the dissident priests, and proclaim to all Marwind that Valjan Celis is the incarnate in Nerevarine, the prophesied savior savior of Morrowind, and the last hope to withstand the menace of Dagoth Ur in the Sixth House. These things I will do, whether you wish it or not. Next, I propose to surrender to you the power and responsibility of defeating Dagoth Ur. You may choose to refuse, I will not compel you. You will receive the power as a gift in the form of an artifact called Wraithguard. You may accept the gift, then do with it as you will. You will receive the responsibility as an oath. You may give your oath, then keep it or break it as you like. First, will you accept Wraithguard as a gift? Yes. Good. Sensible of you. And now, will you give your oath before all gods and men, before all spirits visible and invisible, before my honor and your honor to dedicate yourself and Wraithguard to the defeat and destruction of Dagoth Ur and the preservation of Morrowind and its people? Yes, I swear. Not very sensible, but very good. I was hoping for someone who would have no hesitations about making such an oath. You will now have a brief, momentary sensation of time passing. Don't be alarmed. You are being taken out of time in order to avoid the unpleasant experience of learning how to use Wraithguard. It will be over before... There is a brief sensation of motion and the total darkness, floating, but without a sense of weight or direction. You know it now. Now, I will notify the temple that you are our champion. There shall be no more persecution of the dissident priests, and I hope both sides shall swiftly be reconciled. We have time for questions if you like, or you may leave as you wish. But I think there are at least two things you ought to know before you leave. How to use Wraithguard and how to defeat Dagoth Ur. I am your host and we have time for explanations or counsel or questions or bitter recriminations if you like. Sure, tell me about the bitter recriminations. You want to chide me. Why did I murder Nerevar? Why did I break my oath to Azura and not to use Kagranak's tools? Why did I cause others to suffer? Yeah, why did you kill me? We did not murder Nerevar. The legend that we murdered him comes from a story told by a shield companion to Nerevar, Alando Sul, who lived among the Ashlanders. The Ashlanders have retained his account as part of their oral histories. The account is persuasive in some details and plausible in others and is in any case false. I have two accounts of Nerevar Nerevar's death here in my library. Read them and judge for yourself. Tell me about your library. I want your trust and willing cooperation, so I've had the priests make copy of a number of documents. They're here for you to read or take with you. Take a look at them, help yourself. Okay, um, why did you break your oath with Azura? 
along with Lord Nerevar, and at his insistence, Amalexia Sothasil and I swore before our god of oaths at the time, the Daedra Lord Azura, never to employ the tools of Kakarnak for any purpose. We broke our oaths, we turned our backs on the old gods. I still see no compelling reason to worship any of the Aedra or Daedra, but for the respect I held for Nerevar and the respect I held for myself, I should never have betrayed my oath. Of all of my life's actions, I most regret that failure. Why did you cause others to suffer? I, re I respect that question, and you for it. The, more, the most I can say is I did the best I could as I saw things. Can you, mortal, presume to judge the actions and motives of a god? But because I need you and you need me, I will make accounting an accounting for my sins to you. But not now. Destroy Dagoth Ur, and then we will discuss my sins. Then perhaps you will have earned the right to judge me. Okay, give me some counsel. You need to know where Dagoth Ur is, what are his plans, who are his servants, who he is, what are his powers, what is known about his defenses, how I can prepare for battle against him, and who can help. Holy crap, that is a lot of options. Where is Dagoth Ur? He has never ventured out of the Heart Chamber, the place under Red Mountain, where the heart of Lorcan lies. It is there or nearby that he is constructing a new god, Akulakan, also known as the Second Namidium. What are his plans? We know nothing for sure, but we have learned much from interrogating six house cultists and victims of dream compulsions, and from our study of Dagoth Ur's actions. The temple scholars and inquisitors have prepared a document, Dagoth Ur's plans, that summarizes what we know or suspect. Take this copy, it is also available in my library. Who are his servants? Chief among his servants are his seven brothers, the Ash Vampires, powerful heart white whites, and cunning sorcerers of old. These creatures appear to die but are always revived at the heart. Somehow Dagoth Ur has conferred some portion of his immortality upon them, or perhaps they sustain themselves through more conventional sorcery. Okay, who is Dagoth Ur? He is the former Lord High Counselor of House Dagoth. He was one of Lord Nerevar's generation older than we and a mighty sorcerer and enchanted in life. In his sustained shadow immortality, he appears to be a highly intelligent, severely deluded immortal monster with unparalleled supernatural abilities. He appears by turns lucid and deranged, compassionate and bestial, profoundly wise and profoundly disordered. In short, he's a mad god. Not like you though, no. Uh, what are his powers? He is able to send his mind into the dreams of susceptible victims across vast distances. The victims are either swayed by his compulsions or driven mad. He also seems nearly invulnerable to physical and magical harm. His flesh and the flesh of his followers evolves towards a mutable magical form. Dagoth Ur and the highest ranks can control the distorted manifestations of their flesh. Lower ranks lose control of their bodies and become mindless corporous monsters. Okay, what about his defenses? Confer with the Ordinators and buoyant armagers garrison go garrisoning Ghostgate for the latest information about the defenses of the Citadels of Dagoth Ur and his heart white kin. How can I prepare? Prepare for war. Beyond the ghost fence, there are no safe places, no allies, stockpile resources, plan for retreat and replenishment, quests for artifacts of power. And then who can help? The Ordinators and Armagers at Ghostgate. Okay. Yeah, Vivek has a lot to say, probably more than any NPC, I feel like. You want to know why did I wage war on the Nerevarine? Why did I try to suppress the Apocrypha? Why did I persecute the dissident priests? Why is Dagoth Ur winning the war? How does the tribunal fight Dagoth Ur? And what are the Wraith's Guard powers? Let's keep going. Why did you wage war on me? Why did I try to kill you? Because you threatened the faith of my followers, and I needed their faith to hold back the darkness. And I thought you were my enemy, a pawn of the subtle Daedra Lord Azura, or a pawn of Ur Emperor Uriel Septum, or a simple fraud. Perhaps a hero, but not much of one of my faithful could destroy you. Now circumstances are altered. I need you, and you need me. Why did you try to suppress the Apocrypha? Because it was such an unfortunate mixture of truth, falsehood, and speculation that I couldn't afford to manage the confused reaction of our faithful. Any doubt whatsoever weakened their faith, and we needed their faith to give us the power to maintain the Ghost Gate. In retrospect, perhaps we lost the faith of those we most needed while preserving the faith of the meek and indifferent. Perhaps a mistake was made. Who can say? Why did you persecute the dissident priests? 
Suppression and persecution of dissent is just one of the standard tools of statecraft. I believe we we erred in trusting the judgment of Burel Sala. He and his ordinator served valiant, valiantly in the war against Dagoth Ur. We mistook his misplaced zeal for energy and dedication. Mistakes were made, but no more. There shall be no more persecution of the priests. I hope both sides shall be swiftly reconciled. Okay, why is Dagoth Ur winning? He's winning because he is close to the source of power. Lorcan's heart, and because he retains the passion of madness, while we have settled into the lonely and unrewarding posture of dogged dutifulness and persever perseverance. And finally, perhaps because he is stronger and smarter than we are, and his followers are more fervent and fanatical. I believe we were careless and complacent and outwitted, and in the manner of denying the Nerevarine, we were foolish. So how do you guys fight him? In the past, we made seasonal campaigns to Red Mountain. We slew Dagoth Ur and his kin, though the heart always revived them in time. Later, when we realized we couldn't destroy them, we created the ghost fence to contain the threat. These solutions were effective until Dagoth Ur ambushed us and captured Sunder and Keening. Since that time, our fortunes have waned as his increased. And what are the powers of Wraithguard? Its primary function is to protect the wearer from the fatal energies of the artifacts Sunder and Keening. It also has minor protective enhance enchantments against physical and magical damage that you may find useful. All right, <laughs> questions. <laughs> what really happened to the Dwemer? I have no idea what happened to them. I have no sense of them in the timeless divine world outside of mortal time. And in fact, if I did believe they existed, I would be in no hurry to make contact with them. They may, with some justice, hold the Dunmer race responsible for their fate. My intuition is that they are gone forever, and that is perfectly fine with me. What was the Dwemer's sin? It was the creation of a new god from the substance of a dead god, Lorcan. That is also the sin for which we sh would destroy Dagoth Ur. I hesitate to call it sin, more properly a destructive evil. The sin of the tribunal, however, is in, breaking, in, in the breaking of an oath to Azura to forbear from tapping the heart with Kagranak's tools and in the folly of seeking to become gods. Breaking the oath was evil, becoming gods was folly. If we sinned, we have paid the price. Have you though? I don't feel like you have. What's it like to be a god? It is like being a juggler. Things are always moving and you have to learn to know where they are without even thinking about it. Only there are many, many things moving and sometimes, like any juggler, you drop something. I'm afraid it has become a lot more a matter of dropping things lately. There's too much to do and not enough time and I'm losing my touch. Perhaps I'm growing old. It is a bit like being at once awake and asleep. Awake, I am here with you, thinking and talking. Asleep, I am very, very busy. Perhaps for other gods, the completely immortal ones, it is only like that being asleep, out of time. Me, I exist at once inside of time and outside of it. It's nice never being dead, too. When I die in the world of time, then I am completely asleep. I am very much aware that all I have to do is choose to wake and I am alive again. Many times I have de very deliberately tried to wait patiently, a very long, long time before choosing to wake up. And no matter how long it feels like I wait, it always appears when I wake up that no time has passed at all. That is the God place, the place out of time where everything is always happening all at once. Some deep, deep stuff here. Do you re remember being mortal? I remember, I do not feel it. I can if I choose remember the feeling, but I do not choose. It is a it is very, very sad being mortal. There is happiness, yes, but mostly sadness. As I have said, count only the happy hours. For mortals, they are all too few, but for gods like me, there is no more feeling, only knowing. Not quite no more feeling. I still want to win. I still want to defeat Dagoth Ur. Perhaps I have lost the feeling for the people, for their suffering. I don't want that feeling. It is no use to me. That is no longer what matters to me. I only want not to lose. To lose would be very, very bitter. How do you feel about the people of Morrowind? I love the people of Morrowind. I became their god to make their lives more comfortable and secure. I am most close to my faithful followers. I am literally in their hearts and minds. I feel the most sympathy with House Redoran. They are the Dunmer driven by creeds and deeds like I am. Yeah, they're the best house. House Endoriel is closer to the compassion and sympathy of Amalexia, a comfortable and secure serenity. House Telvanni matches the disposition of my brother, Soth the Sill. Iconoclastic, profane, and unconventional. House Hlali represents the future of the Dunmer, integrated into the sophisticated mainstream of the traditionalist, raceless, godless culture of the Empire. House Drez represents the past of pre-tribunal Great House culture, 
a persistent tradition of Daedra, an ancestor worshipping civilization Dunmer clans. And I even love the Ashlanders for their preservation of the most ancient barbarian tribal traditions of the Dunmer who first settled Morland. Okay, I think we're in the home stretch here. <laughs> How do I defeat Digoth Ur? To defeat him, go to Red Mountain to recover the artifacts Sunder from Gate Citadel Vemnal. Then recover the artifact Blade Keening from Gate Citadel or Drosal. Then proceed with Wraithguard, Sunder, and Keening to the Citadel of Dagoth Ur. Within the Citadel, find the Heart of Lorcan. Use the three artifacts who severed Dagoth Ur's connection to the Heart, and he will be destroyed, and the Blight ended on Morwen. To destroy him, you must sever his connection with the Heart of Lorcan. To do this, strike the Heart with the artifact Hammer Sunder once, then strike the Heart more than once with the artifact Blade Keening. You must wear Wraithguard because you cannot handle either Sunder or Keening unless you are wearing Wraithguard. That is the short, simple explanation. Here's the long, detailed explanation written down for your convenience. Read it, study it, commit it to memory. Okay, that's all Vivek has to say. <laughs> Just a short little bit of dialogue. He also gives you very, very long documents explaining the plans of both Dagoth Ur and how to defeat him. We're not going to read that because I don't want to spend the whole video reading. And then he also has a bunch of documents talking about basically what he just said. If you would like to read them. We are not going to. I'm losing my voice already. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's a pretty big bombshell. And meeting Vivek is always super cool. Getting the explanation from him. Getting to talk to a basically a god, right? Some people would say a false god, but someone who has attained godlike powers. So yeah, we need to head back into Red Mountain and kill two of his ash vampire sons, brothers, Odrasil and Vemnal. Did he mark either one of those? Odrasil, Vemnal. Yep, so they're on opposite sides of Red Mountain. So we do have Ghostgate marked. Let's just start there. Who's this old looking man that looks like Caius? <laughs> Hello. They call me Wolf. What brings you to Ghostgate? Hi, Wolf. This is a hell of a place. Why are you here? I'm the Nerevarine, and I go to confront Dagoth Ur in this citadel. What a piece of luck. Look, I'm an old Legion veteran, as old as the poor Emperor, bless his soul. I'm too old for campaigning. I came this far to look at hell. But I can't go any farther than this. I'd take it kindly if you'd carry this old lucky coin with you when you go to Dagoth Ur. Sort of a token of the tough young hero I used to be. Would you do that for an old man? Of course. I'll take your old lucky coin. That's very kind of you. Here's the coin. I've had it with me a long time and it's always brought me luck, but I have no more use for it. And I'd like to pass it on to someone younger, someone going places I can't go anymore. Your generation's shaper of history, an engine of destiny. That coin will bring you luck in the mountains, I promise. For Emperor and Empire, as we say in the Legions, go with Kinnereth. How do you feel about that poor old Emperor? The Emperor is getting old. Don't know how much longer he'll hang on. So is the whole Empire for that matter. Getting old, that is. The Emperor and the Legions have held the Empire together for hundreds of years. It's been a good thing by and large, but maybe it's time for a change. Time for something young and new. What? No idea. Because I'm old. Old dog doesn't get new ideas. But maybe young folks like you should try some new ideas. I don't know. Could be messy. But change is never pretty. Yes. It's a good, good thing to consider. So yeah, hopefully everyone watching this has at some point talked to Wolf here in Ghostgate. If for no other reason than he gives you a coin. But for also that potentially you. that man is, is uh, Talos, right? The founder of the Empire, Iber Septum Talos. Uh, I think he's called like Yismir. He, he's got a lot of names. He, uh, oh, some ordinators are making out before we head out. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's theorized that that's supposed to be him or at least an aspect of him. And to me, he is one of the coolest characters in the entire series. I don't know why, just the idea of him is, is so, so cool. So interesting. And he actually boosted our luck, so that's nice. <laughs> we, Valjean could use a little luck in his life. So I think for the rest of the episode, we are obviously going to go get the two artifacts that Vivek has had us 
requested that we get before we go and defeat the author, of course. Yeah, I think we should be able to finish the main quest in two episodes, this one and the next one. I have some plans for the final episode and how we're going to end it. So, I don't know, we'll just have to see how it goes. I, I don't know how long this episode is going to be already. Holy crap, you're a tanky, sir. Okay, we are just outside a Drosol. Let's go kill us an Ash Vampire. And this guy, apparently. Ooh, we aggroed that guy. I don't really want to fight that guy. Hopefully he won't follow us. Wemmer Training Academy, all right. Oh boy, he followed us in, okay. And there's a Golden Saint behind us. Where did you come from? And we're dead, all right, well. I guess I came a little unprepared for this, huh? Okay, I'm going to mark <laughs> this location and we are going to recall back to Balmora and we're gonna do some things before we head back. It is way more difficult than I thought it would be. I guess I should have listened to Vivek. Let's grab some artifacts from our base because he said to obtain artifacts of great power as well and probably not a bad idea. We're basically wearing no armor right now, just kind of a robe. It's funny, they give you all that hortator gear and it's not very good. Maybe it's supposed to be ceremonial. All right, so I kind of rearmed myself. I got the Staff of Magnus, I got the Ebony Mail, I got some Glass Greaves, and I put on the Endor Hill, Endor Hill helmet because it's supposed to be Nerevar, right? What better way to start killing some of House Dagoth than by wearing the mask of Nerevar? I just thought it looked cool. Plus, I think we look pretty cool. Hopefully, an armor of 165 is better than <laughs> the 32 that we had. <laughs> All right, let's get back to Red Mountain. Yeah, these guys are nasty. I think they're harder than like most enemies in the game. Look at him. He's still killing us, even with all our extra armor now. Kind of hate these guys. Come on and die already. I want to get into the dungeon. All right, now we can finally enter. I feel a little bit more prepared. I also made a new cat eye spell. So it's very, very bright now. I like that. Tower? Oh, it's just right here. Keening. Okay. Let's grab it. <laughs> Isn't there supposed to be an ash vampire up here? Wow, Keening is really, really good. Really powerful. Doesn't do a lot of damage though. There's dead guy. Huh, I thought we would run into the Ash Vampire, maybe he's not in that room? But if he's not there, where the heck is he? The oh, there he is. Well, Valjan Celis, have you come to serve or to challenge my station or to try to win Keening? I already, already took it. It is well hidden, Valjan Celis. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Even if I should fall, you'll never find it, but you have to choose to serve. But if you choose to serve, perhaps Lord Dagoth might even consent to grant you the use of it. Surely by coming so far, you have drawn his discerning eye and earned his favor. Be reasonable, Valjean Celis. Why risk blood and life for that which might be won by words and service? Now nah, I'm here to challenge you. You think to climb higher in Brother Dagoth's eyes by defeating me? Well, then you might rise at that. None of us heart whites can die. The power of the heart will bring us back in time. But yes, you might win Lord Dagoth's favor by defeating his lieutenants. No hard feelings, Valjean Celis. I lose, I lose my rank. You lose, you lose everything. You're playing for high stakes, Valjean Celis. Are you sure you want to play? Surely there's no dishonor for a mortal to serve a god. He looks pretty cool. Let's kill him. Maybe. If we can hit him. Sorry, are you just invulnerable to all damage? Uh, you deal a lot of damage. That's for sure. Kind of dying here. And I'm dead. There you go. These enemies are very powerful, even with all of our bull crap on us. Well, there's only one way to deal with this, and that's to summon a stupid amount of summons and have them tank for us. Because despite our very strong, powerful artifacts, they're apparently not very strong. I guess we should have leveled up some more, man. Yeah, I'm not even hitting him. I don't know if my game is bugging out or... Why am I not able to hit this guy? 
I know our spear isn't like amazing, but it's at least decent. They seem to be able to hit him. I'm using like a Daedric weapon, so it's not like he's like a ghost. Let's see if I use like a bound longsword. Can I hit him? Well, he's knocking me down. Okay, well, he's gonna kill me again. Holy crap, we're gonna have to level up some more. Yeah, he's also regenning health. Wow, I completely severely misjudged how strong these enemies were. Okay, well, are we that unprepared for these fights? I'm starting to feel like we are. Okay. I'm going to try something else here. It's the only idea that I have if I can survive. He is very quick and very strong. We're going to summon as much as we can in the hopes that they can deal damage to him because it seems like we're not doing anything to him. So don't know what else to do. I think we're going to have to do some leveling. This is kind of ridiculous here. <laughs> He's like killing Daedros like nothing. What's your health now? We can't see it. He's killed them all. That's good. Uh, let's just summon him again, I guess. He's at half health. <laughs> uh, it's kind of working. They seem to be able to hit him easier than we could. See, this is kind of crazy because we're super strong at this point. We've been able to kill almost anyone. So there's definitely some mod that's buffing his stats. Um, a mod that I apparently did not prepare for accordingly. This is kind of insane. I think before we get Sunder, we are going to have to do more level ups. Look at him. He is just murdering my summons. Did they get him? <laughs> we got him. Hooray. Hooray. Holy crap. I mean, we did it, but that does feel kind of cheap, does it not? I don't mind using summons to win fights, but I thought we'd add like, look at us kill like a golden saint. Like it's nothing, you know, these are some of the strongest enemies in the game. So he's just been super buffed by some mod. I kind of like it, but it's kind of <laughs> sad because I, I thought we were truly powerful with the artifacts we have acquired, but no, no, apparently not. Well, we got Keening. That's, that's good. Okay, so we put the Wraith Guard. And then let's equip Keening. I just want to see how it looks. Looks a little dinky, but cool, cool. I like it. All right, well, I think I think I'm just going to have to keep leveling up. We kind of just got our balls kicked until our summons killed him. So clearly we are still under leveled at this point. Maybe our spear skill is too low. It's only 80. <laughs> All right. So another level up. I did agility this time instead of personality because agility will actually help us in a fight. <laughs> personality is not going to help us kill Dagoth there. So probably shouldn't have been leveling it, but I was doing illusion magic. That's why my personality was so high. But yeah, this is another good level. We're two levels away from maxing out willpower. Our endurance is almost maxed. I'm going to do it a few more times. I want to get willpower just done with. Plus it's getting our destruction up. And I think that will be actually pretty helpful. So we can cast some better destruction spells here. Then I'm gonna keep getting spear up. We like couldn't even hit the Dagoth Ash Vampire guy with our spear. And I don't know why, because our weapon is enchanted. It's like Daedric level. So it should be hitting pretty consistently. I don't know if he had some sort of Resist weapon enchantment on him or what? Okay, willpower, agility, and endurance again. And then we're going to shoot for maybe two more. I don't know. All right. One more level. Willpower, agility, <clears throat> and endurance. That's looking a lot better. I got our destruction level up very high. I got our spear up high. We could make a custom destruction spell again Let's see if we can cast it reliably we're still only at 276 mana part of it is you can only wear two rings so every time i equip the warlock's ring to heal 
we lose some magicka, but... So I made a shock spell, so now we are going to go try and get the other artifact, Sunder, which is just up here. I made a shock spell because there are some Daedra here, and I think if it works the same as Oblivion, Daedra are weak to shock. I don't know if Ash Vampires have a particular weakness. It is a touch spell though, so we have to be pretty close. And it uses quite a bit of magic. I don't feel too bad for leveling up as much as we did this episode because that was the plan before we go fight Dagother was to level up a ton. Sort of Valjan's way of getting ready is he would, you know, spend any amount of time getting better. That's kind of been this whole campaign, honestly. Hey, even our spear is hitting better. That's good. Okay, so this is Dagoth Ur. We don't want to be here yet. We need to go get the other Sunder artifact. It is hell trying to navigate this stuff. I probably could have made a really good levitate scroll because our magicka is a lot better now. And I think before we start Tribunal, I'm going to go through and make powerful spells of a bunch of different things. So we don't have to wear so many amulets. Probably like a levitate spell, a pick lock spell, maybe a telekinesis spell, just in case we need to steal something. We're killing enemies quick, like even Ogrims and like I said, Golden Saints die pretty pretty fast. It's just those Ash Vampires are kind of wrecking us. I do think Valjan looks super cool though with this outfit. I'm glad that I still have this helmet because I don't know, there's just something so cool about it wearing it as Nerevar reborn. All right, so we are just outside Vemnal. Here's the entrance. Nothing too fancy to get in. Let's get some Night Eye going. Could probably make an even better version of that, but it's good for now. Last 90 seconds, which is okay. Okay, you're not the Ash Vampire, but you're kicking my balls like one. Get out of here. I'm not here to fight you, Dagoth Nylor. What a silly, silly name. Ebony Arrows, wow. I feel like in an Oblivion and Morrowind, you never really get high level arrows very often. You're pretty much using like silver or iron the entire game. Maybe that's intentional. Kind of sucks though. Mr. Ash Vampire? Nope, just a slave. The Hall of Torque, okay. Yeah, it's funny. I thought this spell would be better than it is. It costs a lot of magic and it doesn't do that much damage. <laughs> I was worried it was going to be OP. No, not having that problem. Okay. Let's take a walk around, see what else is going on. Some more Dagos. Okay. Where's your friend, the Ash Vampire? Oh, he's down there. I actually see him right there. Well, you tell him I'm on my way. He looks kind of angry. Like he's already hostile, so we don't even get to talk to him. That's unfortunate. I know, maybe he's just chilling. Hey, I'm, I'm making my way down. You, uh, get ready for an ass kicking. What the heck? It's a weird looking skeleton. Why don't you have pants on, sir? Beldo the Undying. Blood Feast Shield. That's not very good, but it's unique, so I guess I'll take it. I think that's it to the dungeon. We just have to kill the Ash Vampire here. I noticed this spear breaks actually pretty quickly. It's already at half strength and I just repaired it. Hello. Sleeper awakes. What? You want to talk? You want to surrender? To boast? To talk me to death? Boast. Don't bother. You're not scaring anyone, you know. Just makes you look nervous. Come on. I'm waiting for you to make the first move. You're the challenger. Talk me to death. I am one of the oldest things to have ever slipped from a womb, Valjan says, but I've never heard of anyone talk to death. Of course, there's always a first time, and I was brought up properly. I know it's not polite to interrupt, so you just go ahead, talk all you want, and when you're done, go home, or take your best shot. It's all the same to me. Oh, he's hostile. <laughs> I wanted to appreciate your model. It looks cool. I like your helmet and your mechanical arm. Oh yeah, we're doing a lot better already. We are also paralyzed though, so. Okay, that's quite a bit of damage. Come on. Paralysis, there we go. Okay, okay, he's fighting back, he's pissed. I 
now this is more of my type of fight. Mono y mano, no summons and cheating and jumping around. <laughs> All right, what do we get? The Amulet of Heart Heal, House Dagoth, and Sunder. Constant Fortify Attack, Fortify Strength, Fortify Endurance, and Fortify Luck. That's really good. Really, really good, especially for a one-handed weapon. Cool. I've discovered the artifact Hammer Sunder, one of the enchanted tools created by the Dwemer craft lord Kagranak. Well, that is the end of this dungeon. I think I am going to end it there, though, for today, because between talking to Vivek and leveling so much, taking up the whole episode, and, and I planned on having Dayoth Ur being, being its own episode as well, so yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being on this journey with me through Morrowind. If you enjoy this series, remember to like and subscribe. If you have not already, it does help me a lot and it motivates me to continue making videos for you guys. So anyways, peace out.